Today I'm going to show you how to replace the ignition module in a chainsaw and I will briefly talk about why you may have to do this. Now the main reason why you would have to replace the ignition module in a chainsaw is because you would not have any spark at the spark plug. If you don't have any spark at the spark plug, your chainsaw will never start. Now some of the symptoms that may indicate that you need to replace the ignition module is quite obvious. The first one is that you will not have any spark at all at your spark plug. The second symptom that you may get is that it will run good when it's cold. As soon as the saw warms up, it will not produce any spark to the spark plug anymore. If you let it sit for a while, you may come back. It may run again for a little while until it's warm and then just quit again. So if you suspect that you have a bad ignition module, then what you should do when it quits when it's warm is just take out the spark plug and check for spark. If you don't have any spark, then more than likely it is the ignition module failing on you. You want to make sure first before you replace an ignition module, that you've checked all the electrical system on your chainsaw. And a good way to make sure that there's no electrical problems on your chainsaw is if you disconnect the positive wire from the coil. This will eliminate all the electrical system on your chainsaw. It will isolate the coil by itself. And if you still don't have spark, then it's definitely the coil. However, if you do have spark after removing the positive wire from the coil, then you do have an electrical problem. So the saw I'll be doing this on today is a steel MS270. To start with, I am going to remove the air filter cover. I'm going to remove the spark plug boot. And I am going to remove the top cover. There's two T27 Torx screws. Now I am going to remove the spark plug. By putting the plug back in the boot and grounding it to the engine, you can check to see if there is spark. And as you can see here, there definitely isn't any spark at this plug. A good thing to do is always to try a new plug. And there still isn't any spark at the new one here. A quick tip I want to tell you guys here is when you check for spark, don't put the plug over the spark plug hole here. That's in case there's fuel in the cylinder and that you do have spark, it could catch fire. I forgot to mention this in the previous video that I made on how to check for spark, so I want to make sure that you guys know this today. Now once the cover is off here, you can see the ignition module right here. And what I was talking about earlier in regards to the positive wire is this one right here. If you disconnect this wire, what it does is isolates the coil totally separate from the electrical system on the chainsaw. So I'm going to pull the wire out. And I'll check for spark again. And as you can see, there is no spark here. So by doing this simple test here, I do know for sure that it's a problem with the ignition module and not the electrical system on the chainsaw. When you check for spark and you do have this wire connected here, you always want to make sure that the switch is in the on position. Another simple thing that you could do before replacing an ignition module is try to regap it. However, today I won't bother regapping it because I am 100% sure that the ignition coil is the problem. Now what I need to do is remove the recoil and it's a T27 Torx. And I'll just remove the recoil. And here's a full view of the ignition module or coil here. There's two T27 Torx screws that need to be removed. And then you just have to remove the wires from the coil here. One's the ground and one goes to the switch. And now the whole coil is completely off, so it's very easy to remove. In this box here, I do have the new ignition module and it's part number 1133-400-1350. Again, this is for the steel MS270. And this part here costs around $100 Canadian at this time. And it's good to always compare the new part with the old one to make sure they're exact. And this is absolutely the correct part. Now to reinstall it, I'm going to move the flywheel with the magnets facing up. Now for the space between the ignition module and the flywheel, I'm just using a belt sleeve here. It's about the thickness of a business card. You can also use a business card as well, or if you have a 10 thousandths feeler gauge, that will work too. I'm going to insert my piece of cardboard here. I'm going to put the coil over. Now the coil is going to stick to the magnets of the flywheel, which is okay. And I'm going to reinstall both screws. I'm just going to snug them for now. Don't fully tighten it up yet. And don't forget to attach the wire here.
And now what you want to do is tighten up both screws evenly. I don't have the torque specs, but just use common sense. They do have to be fairly tight. And now to remove the cardboard, just turn the flywheel and pull. And now you can see we have a nice gap between the ignition module and the flywheel magnets. The ignition module must not touch the flywheel when it rotates. Now check the condition of both wires here and if they're good insert them on the ignition module tabs. And then hook up the last wire here. Now I need to reinstall the recoil assembly. And I'll reinstall all the T27 torque screws and I am doing this by hand. I only remove screws like that with my impact. The reason I put these back on by hand is so that I do not over tighten them with the impact. And don't forget to insert the metal cup here for the top screw. Which goes right here through the brake handle. And the final tightening I do in a diagonal pattern. And I've turned off some lights and I'm going to check for spark. And you can see very good spark now. So on this saw here you do have to run the spark plug boot through the cover here. And there are two screws to tighten up again. And in case you're wondering what tool am I using for this, it's a T27 Torx screwdriver from the steel dealer. Here's the part number that you need. Get a few of these, they're always handy to have in the shop. And now I'm going to install a new spark plug, it's an NGKR BPMR 7A. And now reinstall the spark plug boot, it's a bit tight in there. And I just have the back cover here to install. So now everything's completely done. All the tools that you needed today were a T27 Torx screwdriver and a spark plug wrench. That's it. Now that I'm done with the installation, I'm just going to start it up to see how she runs. So as you saw guys, it's quite easy to replace the ignition module on your chainsaw. It hardly takes any tools to do this. If you follow this video step by step, you will be able to do it no matter what your mechanical background is. So thanks again for watching guys. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. You can also follow me on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, and Instagram. And have yourselves a great day.